How's it going folks? In this video, I take a look at my top 10 macOS Sonoma features. That includes much improved keyboard and dictation enhancements, better AirPod switching, Safari profiles, improved screen sharing, and much more. But first, a word from our sponsor. 9 to 5 Mac on YouTube is sponsored by Clean My Mac X from MacPaul. With nearly 30 million downloads and 15 years of expertise, this app is a must try for any Mac user. Whether old or new, maintaining your Mac is essential for smooth Mac OS performance. Clean My Mac X is the all-in-one Mac maintenance tool that helps eliminate junk files, hung processes, adware, malware, and malicious apps that slow down even the latest, most powerful Macs. Using the app's menu, you can monitor your Mac's health, CPU load, and more. If you're looking to get your Mac prepared for macOS Sonoma, this is the perfect companion app to get your Mac in tip-top shape. Click the link in the description to get Clean My Mac X with a 5% discount today. Special thanks to Mac Paul for sponsoring 9to5Mac. One of my favorite improvements in macOS Sonoma and iOS 17 is the improved AirPod switching. So in the past, I found this feature to be a little bit on the slow side, but now with the latest beta firmware on my AirPods, and running the latest versions of Mac OS and iOS, the experience just feels all that more seamless. It's much faster than before, not perfect still, but when it does work, I find that it's much faster than it was before. So we have some keyboard and dictation enhancements. First of all, you're gonna notice when you invoke dictation, you get a brand new icon, uh, it's orange now, looks a little bit less corporate than before, and I think it's a good change. Now, speaking of dictation, you can dictate as I'm doing here, like normal, right? See the little dictation icon? So I'm using my voice to dictate the text, but now I'm typing. But here's the cool thing, when I stop typing, you'll notice that the dictation icon reappears and then I can start dictating text. You can tell it's dictation because you got that little orange trail that follows the text. You'll see it here. Give me one second, let me just finish typing this out. I'm typing with my keyboard now. Now, dictation, you see the orange trail? So that helps you to see the difference there. But you can use both interchangeably, just like you can now on iOS 16. For me, this is gonna make all the difference as to whether or not I choose to use dictation. What about you guys? Do you dictate text normally on your Mac or do you generally avoid using it? Let me know down below in the comment section. I am genuinely curious as to what you folks are gonna say. Have you ever started typing and it's accidentally all caps? Well, now that won't happen as much because in macOS Sonoma, there's now a caps lock indicator when your caps lock key is enabled. Pretty handy. I wonder why we didn't think about that before. And in macOS Sonoma, you now get, wait for it, inline predictive text as you type. So you just tap the space bar to finish words, but not just single words. We're talking entire sentences. So yeah, once it learns your behavior, that'll be very helpful. And in macOS Sonoma, there are improvements to autocorrect. So it's Supposedly more accurate, haven't really been able to test that fully yet, but now autocorrected words are temporarily underlined and then you can revert back just by clicking like that. Well, I guess it's pronounced clicking as well. And PDFs get some nice upgrades. You can now fill out your documents faster when you need to insert things like addresses. You can use autofill now. So I'm just selecting a contact and then I'm finding the address and then you just click to insert the address and you can see right there address number obviously it's blocked out but take my word for it an address is in that field uh, and that makes it super easy to get that in there quickly rather than looking it up and then having to type it out and what's also cool is that in the notes app if you drag a pdf into a note you'll notice that you can now flip through all the pages of the pdf within the notes app itself and you can also change the attachment display size. So if you click here and go to attachment display, you can switch between large, medium, and we'll switch to small. And small is basically just the old school way of embedding or attaching the PDF. Now you can also click to show and hide thumbnails, just like that. And now you can view a full width PDF right within the notes app and click between each of its pages. You can also keep more than one PDF in the same note. Depending on how you use the notes app, you may not even care about such a thing, but if you use it sort of like an Evernote alternative, I can see that being really, really handy. And screen sharing has been improved in macOS Sonoma as well. You'll now see a new screen sharing picker. Just hover over the green stoplight in the upper left-hand corner of the app you wish to share, and then choose your sharing option. And the sharing picker appears whenever you're in a compatible video call. So I'm using FaceTime, 
and it appears just like this. So now I can stop sharing. We're gonna go to Safari this time, do the same thing, hover over the stoplight, select share, and we're sharing just like that. And there's also gonna be a new high performance mode for screen sharing that's gonna enable, thanks to Apple Silicon, more responsive remote access. So if you're running Final Cut Pro via remote access, you're gonna have a much better experience. And that's of course, assuming you have enough bandwidth to spare. And sort of adjacent to that, you have video conferencing updates. So here I am using my iPhone, using continuity camera, which is awesome. And I definitely recommend uh, Belkin's iPhone mount with MagSafe for the displays. So they make two versions, one for Mac desktops and displays like the Pro Display XDR. And they of course also make one that's geared towards MacBooks. And I'm always kind of amazed how good this feature is, especially as you can see, it has center stage support built in when using your iPhone. And with that being said, you can go into the menu bar and choose your uh, video conferencing application as you can see there, and I'm using purple camera, which is the name of my iPhone. You could switch between the main and the ultra wide camera, which can make a definite difference depending on the environment that you're conferencing in. Um, so again, main and ultra wide, nice to have those options. Now, speaking of options, you now have the ability to enable reactions and you can manually invoke a reaction just by clicking. So click the hearts thumbs up, thumbs down, balloons, rain, confetti, whatever that is, lasers, and fireworks. And no green screen, no green screen required. You could probably think to yourself, hey, that could have used a green screen there. But th there's not just manually invoked reactions. They also will invoke based on gestures. So two thumbs up, equals fireworks okay one thumb up one thumb down speaking of thumbs up go ahead and give me a thumbs up if you appreciate videos like this now let's talk about the big new feature to come to video conferencing and that is of course being able to invoke the new presenter overlays and this basically superimposes yourself on top of what you're presenting so you have to be sharing your screen and then you just click presenter overlay small or large and you'll see it down in the bottom left-hand corner. There we go. So there is the small presenter overlay, basically this small option that gives you a movable bubble so that you can put it wherever you want on the screen like that. And you can see it is, there's some occlusion going on there with that bubble. It's not perfect, but it looks pretty good, especially when you consider you're not using a green screen. And I think they're only gonna get better at this sort of thing. Perfect exercise for machine learning and of course Apple is always keen on making improvements to its neural engine. So this is going to get better over time. And I just think that little bubble's cool. So let's just go ahead and move it around a little bit more before we switch over to the large overlay and show you that. <laughs> All right, so if we go back to the menu bar, this time we'll select large. So you get a preview here in the currently sharing section so that Large overlay keeps you spotlighted with the screen in the background on a separate layer. So as you can see, this could definitely enhance your presentations. It makes it feel more alive. You can actually point to your content or whatever you're sharing directly like this. It's a lot more immersive that way. Gaming gets some serious attention in macOS Sonoma, starting with game mode. So what is game mode? Well, we can just look at the banner notification and tell you Game mode prioritizes the performance of games while in full screen. So let's go ahead and put what the car in full screen like that. But what about when we're not viewing the game? Well, you'll see a new menu bar icon. Click that. You can see game mode is paused. So it pauses automatically when it's no longer in full screen and in view. So you can see game mode is on now because we've switched to that game. So this feature prioritizes your Mac CPU and GPU resources for supported games, but not just that, it also reduces wireless latency for AirPods and supported gaming controllers. So less latency, the better the experience. But it doesn't stop there. We also have DirectX 12 support built into macOS Sonoma for gaming emulation. So this is a feature that hopefully third-party applications like Parallels will be able to take advantage of so you'll be able to play more AAA titles if that's your thing using a virtual machine. 
Like always, Safari has quite a few new changes in the latest version of Mac OS, but by far the biggest new addition is support for profiles. So profiles keep things like your history, your cookies, your extensions, your favorites, even tab groups separate from each other. So I can have a personal profile, I can have a business profile, etc. You can see here on the personal profile, you see there's a difference between the bookmarks on the bookmark bar because they're two different profiles. So I can easily switch between tab groups like that within those particular profiles. Pretty cool stuff there. But the really cool thing about this is that the cookies are separate as well. So for instance, I switched over to the profile for Electrack and you can see I'm logged into the Electrack YouTube channel. Now, when I switch over to my personal profile, notice what happens when we click YouTube. It's switched and ready to go for nine to five max YouTube channel. So that's one thing that makes profiles super handy. You can be logged into the same site with two different accounts, thanks to those silo profiles. Now you also see the history, there's my personal history, but then when I switch to the Electrek profile, and I go up to history there, you can see there's a lot more there because again, the history is siloed for each profile. So even when you go to clear your history, you can clear history just for one profile if you wanna do that. So to create a new profile, you go to Safari settings, click the profiles tab, and there you can give your profile a name, Personal is your default, but you can rename it if you want to. You can choose your symbol, choose your color. And then here's my second profile, Electrek. This is one I created. And you can also enable extensions that you would like to use with each profile. So I've already set this one up with the bike symbol. Since we review a lot of electric bikes, I thought that just made sense. And I even selected a color that was Electrek-esque. But here's what I, I find neat about this whole thing. So I have the color, I have the icon. Watch what happens when we switch over to our electric profile. See the background there? Look familiar? Now let's talk about widgets because widgets get a massive upgrade in Mac OS 14. So if you click notification center, you see this is how it's been for a while now. You have your widgets dedicated in, in the notification center. You can go in and edit those if you wish to do that. Ah, but you'll notice when you click edit widgets, you get this right here, an enhanced widget gallery. So this will showcase all the widgets that you have on your Mac. And it goes a little bit beyond that. We'll talk about that in just a second. It's actually a really, really cool feature. Now let's talk about how to use the gallery. Since I invoked it from Notification Center, when I click the plus sign, it'll add that widget directly to Notification Center. But you can always just drag the widget directly to your desktop like that and you could put it anywhere on the desktop. So that's a really nice new feature to have. Now you can also right click on the desktop, select edit widgets, and this time when you just click on one, it'll just put it in the upper left hand corner and sort of tile it like that, as you can see. But you can still drag and drop, of course, and that's the way I would recommend doing it. But you'll also notice that when two widgets are next to one another, you'll get snapping. And this occurs when your widget that you're dragging is adjacent to one or more widgets. Now you can right click on a widget and change its size. You can go from large to medium to small, just like that, we'll go back to large. You can also go in, right click and select edit widget and you can change any parameters if that widget has parameters, just like that. Now I'm gonna set that one to small, rearrange, make that one large. You can see the snapping. And depending on your the orientation of the icon, snapping can kind of be a little bit finicky, but again, this is a beta, so what do you expect? Now, here's another cool thing. When you move a widget next to a desktop item, such as an icon, you'll notice that it dances out of the way. So you can't put a widget on top of an icon and you can't put an icon on top of a widget. And when I disable sorting, then you can see things get really wild. But keep in mind that snapping still plays a role. So even if they're dancing out of the way, if you have one or more widgets next to the widget that you're placing, you're going to see snapping enabled. Otherwise, you can place the widget anywhere. Now, here's a really cool thing. Now you have interactive widgets. So you can click a light, for instance, and that light will just go off in whatever room it's in without actually having to launch the home app. And you'll notice that when you switch between desktops, your widgets stay there. So no widget customization per desktop yet. And when an app takes focus, the widgets go monochrome, but when you click on the desktop to focus on the widgets, you get the full color. See the difference? 
so less distraction when using your app on top of those widgets. You can still interact with them, but they're much less distracting this way. I think Apple made a pretty good decision with that setup. What do you guys think? Do you think this is the right way to go about widgets or do you think there's a better method that Apple could have employed? Let me know down below. Now let's go into the system settings and if you click desktop and dock, you'll see show items under desktop. You turn that off, your icons are hidden and widgets go monochrome when the app takes focus. So now we're gonna turn off show widgets and it hides both widgets and items. So you can click the desktop to get both back. Let's go ahead and turn them back on. Now there is this here, click wallpaper to show desktop items. So that's a new feature in macOS Sonoma. I usually use a hot corner for this, so it's gonna take me some time to get used to it, but I think I like the, the idea behind it at least. Now under widgets, you're gonna see, you can switch the widget style to full color or monochrome. So you can make it that way, regardless of whether you're focused on widgets or not. But personally speaking, I like the automatic mode the best. Now let's talk about this use iphone widgets this is a pretty big deal i mean because look you see agenda here you see from iphone but you also have the mac version of agenda as well so to present those iphone widgets it's using continuity and mirrors that widget right on the desktop without actually having to install the corresponding apps on your mac so i don't have coinbase on my mac it's on my iphone but i can drag that widget directly to the desktop just like that and we can do the same thing for the Tesla app. So we'll just drag like this. That looks pretty good. And yeah, so there we go. So of course, with new releases, we look forward to new wallpaper and there are tons of new wallpaper. Specifically, we're gonna focus on the new landscape, cityscape, underwater, and earth wallpapers. So I'm gonna just go in and select one, switch to it just like that. It looks pretty good. What do you guys think? So let's just go through and showcase a few of them. So that one is Grand Canyon, of course. There's Iceland. And if these look familiar to you, if you've seen these before, it's probably because you have an Apple TV. And you may be thinking to yourself, I didn't think Apple TV had wallpaper, but they do have screensavers that animate. So where does that all play in? Well, I'm gonna show you here in just a second. As you saw there, you can choose to uh, set up a rotation time if a wallpaper contains more than one scene. And for some wallpapers that have not yet been downloaded, you'll have to do that as you can see I'm doing with New York. Just like that. I really like that one. So let's go through and select a few more. We did New York, so it's only right to do Los Angeles. Shout out to my West Coast folks. And again, just like the Apple TV, Los Angeles has four different screensavers and you can choose the rotation period. And you can use that to switch things up a little bit to give it a little bit more spice. So I'll showcase a few more of the wallpapers and I've sped things up a little bit just to kind of give you a quick sneak peek, but I also don't want to put you guys to sleep. So uh, yeah, sped it up a little bit. Which one of these is your favorite wallpaper? Let me know down below in the comment section. But I want to talk now about screensavers because they're related in this case. So you see a little switch there for show a screensaver. Now watch what happens when I invoke the screensaver. The wallpaper comes to life. Yeah, so these are animated wallpapers that are basically put into static mode when you wake your device and you get to your desktop. See how it slows down to a stop. But the cool thing about this is that when it comes to a stop, it's in a different place every time depending on where you were when you woke up your device. So that's gonna give you subtle changes to your wallpaper pretty much every time you wake up from screensaver. And I have to say that the Grand Canyon screensaver in motion is definitely at the top of my list. Now let's talk about a feature that's closely related, the lock screen. So if you go up to the Apple menu and select lock screen, look what happens. The wallpaper is now animated just like the screensaver was, but now your device is actually locked. You see the date and time at the top. You see your Memoji icon or whatever icon you chose. And then you see the little input for the password. So let's go ahead and unlock our device and you'll notice that the wallpaper comes to a stop. So if we click lock screen in preferences or settings, I should say, I'm still trying to get used to that. You'll see options for the lock screen. So you can say, hey, I wanna show the clock on the screensaver and on the lock screen. So when I invoke the screensaver, now I see the clock and date as well. Or I can say, hey, I never wanna see the clock. So now I'm going to go and lock my screen and now we just see the 
Memoji icon and the password input field. So let's go ahead and of course our animated wallpaper. Let's go ahead and unlock. Let's go back and let's set that large clock to show on the lock screen. And you can see I also turned off name and photo as well. So now I just have the text input or the password input field along with the date and time. What do you guys think about the iPad OS inspired lock screen in Mac OS Sonoma? Let me know down below in the comments section. So ladies and gentlemen, that has been my look at Mac OS Sonoma, my top 10 features. Personally speaking, I think this update has been solid. It comes with a lot of new bells and whistles, but it also improves on some basic fundamental aspects of the desktop experience. What do you think? Let me know down below in the comment section. This is Jeff with 9to5Mac. Special thanks to Mac Paul for sponsoring 9to5Mac. If you're looking to get your Mac prepared for Mac OS Sonoma, then Clean My Mac X provides an aesthetically pleasing and hassle-free way to do so. You can eliminate junk files, malware, and more, getting your Mac in tip-top shape. Click the link in the description to get it today and take advantage of a 5% discount. Special thanks to Mac Paul for sponsoring 9to5Mac on YouTube.